Hi, Vanessa here. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to crochet this mask. This is an adult size. It is adjustable by chaining more or less stitches to get the desired length. You can adjust by working more or less chains in your foundation and then making more or less rows as you go up. So I am not an expert in sewing, but I did get a couple of requests for um, instructions on how to put a lining inside as well. I'm going to also demonstrate how to crochet um, a hair tie instead of crocheting a loop, if that's what you would like. Um, just make sure you have two hair ties if you're going to use hair ties instead of the chain stitches. For materials, I use 100% cotton yarn. This is Hobby Lobby's I Love This Cotton. It's their cotton version of the I Love This Yarn. And um, I like this yarn because it's 100% cotton and it's really soft. So this one is Paris in Summer. Okay, just a quick note before we get started. Um, these do not replace your N95 masks. Uh, the CDC recommends using fabric masks to go out into the public. So they have tons of information. They have a few DIYs on their website at cdc.gov. So I used a smaller than recommended hook size just to get a little tighter tension. This is US 7, 4.5 millimeters. You'll need a pair of scissors, tapestry needle, uh, tape measure would be good. And then for the lining, I have um, some scrap fabric that I found. You'll need some pins, um, some thread, and a sewing needle. And if you plan to use hair ties instead of the chain stitches, you'll need two of those. All right, let's get started. Okay, starting with a slip knot. You're going to chain the length that you want. So I have six stitches here for these slip stitches, six here, 23 in the middle. Started with 35 stitches. So I chained 36. You can chain until you get the desired length. To customize this to your own measurements, so we start here there are six slip stitches on either side. So that would, if you want to change that, that's fine. And then you need an odd number of stitches in the middle. And that's because we're going to increase right in the middle of the mask. So 23 in the middle. So you can grab a few stitch markers if you like to mark the six stitches here, the six stitches here, and then the middle stitch. Okay, so I have 36 chain stitches. Starting with the second chain from the hook, here's the first, there's the second. You want to insert your hook into the back side, so the humps of your chain stitches. And we're going to work one slip stitch into the second chain from the hook. So we're skipping the first chain into the second chain. You want to insert your hook and then yarn over pull through the chain stitch and pull through the loop on your hook. So I recommend working your slip stitches loosely. Um, that's because they do get pretty tight and you won't be able to work into them as um, easily if they're tight. So into the next chain stitch right through the hump, work another slip stitch. So that's two slip stitches. You want to work a total of six. So that's three. Four. Five. And six. In the next 25 chain stitches, you're going to work one single crochet in each of the next 25 stitches. So insert your hook into the next chain stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, and pull through two. 
insert your hook into the next chain stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. So if you don't want to count, just make sure that you leave six chain stitches for your slip stitches for the other side. So I have six chain stitches left. I'm going to work slip stitches in the last six chains. So that's one, two, three, four, five, and six. So I'm going to place a stitch marker here on the sixth stitch and then count six this way. One, two, three, four, five, and six. So if you're following this exact pattern, place a marker on the middle stitch, which is 12, which is the 12th stitch from either side. So count 12 stitches. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12. So I'm placing that to mark my middle stitch. Okay, so this is your wrong side. Okay, row two. This is going to be the right side of your work. Chain one and turn. So now for the remaining of the pattern, we're going to work into the back loops. So that gives it the ribbing effect. So in traditional crochet, you usually work through so in a regular single crochet or so in a regular crochet stitch, you work through both of these loops. This one here is the front loop. This one is the back loop. Be careful not to work into this one, which is your chain one. So inserting your hook into the back loops. Okay. Yarn over, pull through, and pull through the loop on your hook. So we're going to work six, a total of six slip stitches going through the back loop. So here's the back loop, yarn over, pull through, pull through. Into the next stitch, yarn over, pull through, pull through. Next stitch, yarn over, pull through, pull through. And then this is my sixth stitch that I marked here. So after this stitch, I should have six. And then we're going to start working single crochets until the stitch before the marker. If you're customizing, just go ahead and work your single crochets through back loops until the stitch before the middle stitch. So into the back loop of the next stitch, one single crochet, into the next back loop, and every back loop until the stitch before the middle stitch. In this pattern, it's 10 single crochets through back loop. Okay, so that's my 10th stitch. I have one more before the stitch marker. I'm going to work two single crochets into the next stitch. Okay, work two single crochets in the back loops into that next stitch. Just one single crochet in the next through the back loop and then two single crochets in the next back loop. One and two. Now you work ten single crochets through back loops until the marker or however many you have until the marker which we will then start with the slip stitches. So one, two, 
So here are my last six stitches. We're going to work one slip stitch through the back loop into the, each of the last six stitches. That's two. Okay, so here's my six slip stitch. I forgot to mention that if you need to place a marker on the right side of your work just to help you um, remember which side is which, you can just place a stitch marker on the right side. Chain one and turn. So for the wrong side, you're just going to slip stitch six stitches through the back loop and then one single crochet in each of the stitches across through the back loop until the last six stitches and then you'll work the slip stitches through back loops into the last six stitches. So there are no increases or decreases on the wrong side. Again we're working just in the back loops. Work six slip stitches through the back loops. I've removed my markers because I'm not a huge fan of them so you can keep them on there if you like. Now my single crochets. Remember you increase two stitches on the other side and then work your slip stitches through back loops on the other end. Okay, row four, chain one and turn. Again, we're working just in the back loops. Work six slip stitches through the back loops. Okay, so I placed the marker back on here for you to see. So you want to work one single crochet through the back loop until the stitch before the center stitch. If you're following along, that would be 11 single crochets and then an increase. Okay, one stitch before the marker, I'm going to work two single crochets through back loop, one single crochet into the center stitch, two single crochet into the next stitch, and then one single crochet through back loop all the way to the, until the last six stitches. Okay, last six stitches, so we're going to work slip stitches through the back loop. Make sure you count your stitches. The last stitch is usually a little tricky to get into. Okay, row five, chain one and turn. Again, this is the wrong side, so we're working through back loops in every stitch. Six slip stitches through back loop. One single crochet in back loops all the way across in every stitch until the last six slip stitches. Then one slip stitch through back loop all the way across.
So I've moved my center stitch marker up as I work. So row six, chain one and turn. So we're going to work two more increases on the sides of the center stitch. So one slip stitch in the first six stitches in each of the next six stitches. Again, we're working through back loops only. Now you work 12 single crochets through back loop or as many as you have until the stitch before the center stitch. Okay, we're going to increase before the center stitch, working two single crochets into that one stitch. Work one single crochet in the next, which is the center stitch. You can move your marker at this time if you like. And then two single crochets in the next. Now we're working one single crochet and again through back loops for the next 12 stitches or before the last six stitches. Slip stitch in each of the next slip stitches. There should be six of them or whatever number you chose to have. Row seven, chain one and turn. Work six slip stitches through back loop. This is the wrong side, so you're just going to work one single crochet through back loop all the way across to the last six stitches. Okay, and then six slip stitches in the last six stitches here. Chain one and turn. Row eight, we're going to work another increase row. Work your first six slip stitches through the back loops. Okay, so I am on the right side, so what I'm going to do now is one single crochet through back loop all the way across until the stitch before the center stitch. So I'm at the stitch before the center stitch. I'm going to work two single crochets, one single crochet, and then two single crochet in the next. and then one single crochet all the way to these slip stitches. So the last six stitches will be slip stitches through the back loop. chain one and turn. Row nine, this is the wrong side so we're not going to work any increases. Okay, so you're just going to work one single crochet 
in every stitch after you work your six slip stitches. Working through the back loops until your last six stitches. Last single crochet. Now I'll work my slip stitches in the next six stitches. So keep in mind if you do keep increasing that when you decide to stop and start your decrease back to the other side it should be about half the width that you want. If you're going to continue increasing just just know that this width here is going to be half of of your mask. So each of these ridges are two rows, one, two, three, so about that much remained the same. And then this was the increase and then that was the decrease. So just keep that in mind if you're adjusting it for a particular size. Okay, so you're going to repeat row nine, working just the six slip stitches, the single crochets all the way across without increasing and the six slip stitches at the end. So you're going to repeat row nine six more times. So you'll end after row 15 and then we start decreasing in row 16. Okay, I've completed row 15. I'm going to chain one and turn. Now for row 16, we're going to start decreasing. So I moved my marker up to the current row for the center stitch. With the decrease, you're going to stop two stitches from the center stitch and then we're going to work single crochet two together over those two stitches to decrease and then we're going to just work one single crochet and then we're working another decrease on this side. So work your slip stitches through back loops Okay, now I'm going to work single crochet stitches through the back loops until the second stitch from the center stitch. Okay, now over these two stitches, we're going to work a single crochet two together through the back loops. So insert your hook into the next stitch through the back loop, yarn over, pull up a loop. Without completing the single crochet, you're going to insert your hook into the next stitch, yarn over, and pull up a loop. With three loops on your hook, you're going to yarn over and pull through all three. So that is a single crochet two together one single crochet in the center stitch through the back loop and then we're going to work another single crochet two together over these two stitches. So insert your hook into the next stitch through the back loop, yarn over, pull up a loop, insert your hook into the next stitch through the back loop, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through all three loops. Now I'm going to continue down this direction working single crochets through back loops until the last six stitches. Okay, six slip stitches through the back loops to the end. Two, three, four, five, and six. Okay, so the wrong side is going to be the same. Just your slip stitches, no increases all the way across, and then your slip stitches on this side. Okay, so I've completed row 17. Okay, the repeat is going to be rows 16 and 17. You're going to start on the right side of your work, six slip stitches through back loops, 
you're going to work one single crochet through back loops all the way until two stitches before the center stitch here and then you're going to work single crochet two together over these two stitches one single crochet through back loop for the center stitch single crochet two together for the next two stitches and then single crochet through back loops all the way to the slip stitches the last six stitches and then slip stitch through back loops all the way to the end okay on the wrong side again everything is worked through the back loops are you tired of hearing me say back loops <laughs> so six slip stitches single crochet through back loops all the way across and then six slip stitches so repeat that three more times and you'll end after row 23 Again, you should end with the same amount of stitches as you started with. I'll go ahead and work one more decrease row. Chain one and turn. I'm on the right side of the work. This is my row 18. Six slip stitches through back loops. One, two, three, four, five and six. Now you're going to single crochet through back loops until the two stitches before the center stitch. Okay, in the two stitches before the center stitch you're going to work a single crochet two together through back loops. Insert your hook into the next stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop. Insert your hook into the next stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop. Yarn over and pull through all three. One single crochet in the center stitch through the back loop and then another single crochet two together. Insert your hook into the next stitch through the back loop, yarn over, pull up a loop insert your hook into the next stitch through the back loop, yarn over and pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through all three. One single crochet through back loops until the last six stitches. Okay, one slip stitch through the back loop in each of the last six stitches. So I completed my last row, row 23. So I have the same amount of stitches that I did when I first started. So 23 in the middle, 6 on either side. 23 here, 6 on each side. So now we're going to make the ear strap. I just chained a number of stitches that fit around my ears and it was 17 stitches. And then into the very first stitch here in the corner I'm going to work a slip stitch. I want to insert my hook so that I catch more than one uh, loop. Okay, just so that it's more secure. And then I'm going to work a slip stitch. So before you fasten off, you can place this on your ear to see how comfortable it is. Okay, you can even fasten on and work this side and see how the fit is. So I'm going to grab the tail and feed it through the loop and tighten it. You want to make sure you secure it very well, so tie it off in several places when you're weaving it in. Okay, for this side you want to fasten on your yarn, so just work, leave a tail so you can weave in um, the ends and secure the strap. So on the very edge right here you want to insert your hook into that last stitch 
place your yarn on your hook, pull it through. Okay, so I'm going to chain 17 and, and then work a slip stitch on the other end. Okay, over here, work a slip stitch. Yarn over and pull through. And then you want to weave in your ends. So I'm going to take this apart and show you how to crochet a hair tie on here if that's what you want to attach. Okay, so I'm going to attach the hair tie along the edge here. So if you pull this apart, you can see this row here with the V's, okay, and then there's the row down here, which are the V's on this side. So we're going to be inserting our hook in between these ridges and making sure you catch more than one loop of yarn. That way it'll be more secure. Okay, so you don't want to insert through just one loop. If you have to go further down, so you can grab more than one loop. Okay, so I'm going to insert the hook into my first stitch. Okay, so right between this V and this row here, I'm going to insert my hook, making sure I don't go through just one loop. Grab my hair tie and place it on my hook. Make sure your working yarn is tight and then yarn over and then pull it through. Make sure you catch the hair tie. Okay, now yarn over and pull through two. So we're just working single crochet stitches across. So between these two ridges here, okay, you're going to insert your hook and then make sure you catch your hair tie, yarn over, pull up a loop. Again, I like to tug on it so it's tight, yarn over and pull through two. Into the next space there, catching your hair tie, yarn over and pull through two. Okay, so I'm going to repeat that across the side of my mask. You want to make sure you catch the hair tie into your work. Black is the only color I have, <laughs> so it's not ideal, but it works. Okay, my last stitch will go through here, catching the hair tie, and work your single crochet. Okay, so that would go around your ear. You just want to fasten off and weave in your ends, and then repeat for the other side. Okay, so what I'm going to do is trace around my piece. I'm going to stretch it as much as I can and then just trace around to get a template. Then I'm going to cut Okay, so this is one way you can cut your fabric or you could just place your piece directly on the fabric and trace it that way. Okay, so here I have cotton and I'm going to use two layers. So you wanna make sure that your fabric is pre-washed. 
So if you want two layers of lining, you're going to need four pieces. So you can cut out your piece like this, or you could just place this and trace it on here. Okay, so that's the other way to do that. And then I'm going to cut that out. And what I'm going to do now is sew around the edges with about 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance. Sew around the edges, leaving about 2 inches so that you can turn it inside out. So sew around with 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance. And the reason why I left the opening on this curved part is so that It'll be less visible when we sew these two pieces together. Okay, so then you want to cut as close as you can to the thread in the corner diagonally. Just make sure you don't cut your thread and then do the same for the other corners and then right here where it's sort of rounded you can just cut little slits across I don't think it's uh, necessary since it's not that curved and then using a double pointed needle or something that's not too sharp you want to insert it through the hole and just press along the edges and the corners Okay, once you have your two pieces, you're going to iron it so that you press all the sides and corners down. And then I'm going to leave this because when I sew it together, it's going to sew right over it. You can seam it before you do that if you'd like. You're going to place these two together and then you're going to sew right along the edge as close as you can to the edge, just on the curved part. Okay, so I've sewn my curved edge here. If you flip that around, this will be your right side. Okay, so this one is double lined and I just wanted to show you how to do that. And this one was just one layer of fabric for the tutorial. So I'm just going to pin this around and then I'm going to hand sew it together. So I'm going to place it in the middle and then push it out to the sides and pin it there. I don't sew often so I am no expert. I'm just sort of winging this as I go. Um, you can definitely check out all of the great sewing tutorials out there. I'm going to use a different color thread. This one is a lot stronger than the other ones that I have. Tie a couple of knots at the end. Okay, so I'm going to start right here. So I'm going to go under the fabric and I'm going along right along the edge so this is the invisible seam don't forget to tie a knot at the end of your thread you can double up if you don't have a strong enough thread okay so now I'm going to go through 
this row here. And then I'm going to come back to the edge here and then just insert through there. And then through the next row right across so I'm using these rows as a guide to where I'm stitching. Okay, now back onto the fabric. Okay, now on the other side of your crochet work. Okay, so I'm going to repeat that all the way around my mask. So for this edge, I'm sewing it right in this row right here in the crease. Okay, so right along here. So I'm leaving this last row visible. So I've stitched all the way around and to finish off, I'm going to go through the fabric and then just wrap the needle with the thread a couple times. Okay, placing your thumb there, you just want to pull it through and then tighten it. And I'm just going to run it through here. So that it's on the inside. All right, so now we have the mask and it is lined with cotton. Okay, thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Don't forget to subscribe for future videos. I'll see you next time.